Mary, you came and left quietly, never late, with few words spoken, with words chosen carefully and listened to. When small children came with me to guide me through my weekends, you softened their hearts with overflowing bowls, jelly and ice cream. Daddy, please can I come? I won't be bored. You came and left quietly. When you smiled behind that till, it was a revelation. When you lifted your head in the bed, it was with courage and humility, as if you understood the pain in us. You came and went quietly, deprived of the mortification we inflicted as you left. Salutations, memories, anecdotes, never uttered in life, clapping, conjured up by the empty space within us, left suspended in the rain and gusts of wind. Resting, it's a lonely place. The wind carries the sound of cows grazing. Faint noises of passing cars float above me while the sun shines. The sun provides little warmth while the cows remind me that life does indeed go on. From side to side the wind pushes me, ensuring I know I am not rooted to this spot, to this time or place of rest, not yet anyway. They are not here, I tell myself. Their vessels are, their souls are not. I think of my sister living in Australia, her pain this past year, her strength to get up each morning to look after her little family, how her heart must break for us, her family here in Ireland, how the world stopped. And she could not be with us, we said, our final goodbyes. I shake my head as tears fall. I think of funerals before the pandemic, realize how essential wakes are, how invaluable is a house filled with people talking, sharing stories, hugging, kissing, laughing and crying all helps the grieving process. Grief, they say, is a process. This pandemic has stopped everything in our world, including the process of grieving. Ma'am, imprisoned in pain and grief, as 10 of us sit in this beautiful cathedral, empty rows of seats are filled with colorful sunlight that beams through stained glass windows above us. It brings much welcomed comfort from our emotional pain. We are on the top of cliffs overlooking the sea and I am able to slow down bring myself back to the present moment, to say goodbye to my mum in an empty cathedral, surrounded by love and peace. I'm getting ready for the next chapter, mum. Swirls. Why, oh why, did he want to die when he had his finger in every pie? He never told me and I talk to him every day. I can't get over the dreadful dismay. Come what may, I can't say. His loss has made one sad day. His life was good. He's lost in the wood. He did what he should for the common good. It puts me to shame that I was so lame. I didn't know his game. I could have given him a different name. Could he not have told me, missing, his words of worth? I have lost three times. One was my dame. Why was I so tame? To lose every game. Nobody but him will ever be the same. Serenity, 
Although thousands of miles away, unable to hold and touch my mother or inhale her calming smell of her being, the room was serene and comforting, almost spa-like. The faint smell of bergamot and lavender in the air. I loved that the doors were open to the garden. My mother loved her garden. I am quite confident she thought she was in her own bedroom. Death in the time of coronavirus. No hand to hold in that sterile room. No tender kiss when I succumb too soon. No requiem mass or traditional wake. No sorry for your troubles, dead fish handshakes. No book of condolences, nor graveside eulogy. No husband allowed, he has COVID-19. Loss in COVID. David was admitted to the hospice. I did nothing except travel up and down to see him. I was grateful I could still visit, although suddenly limited to an hour or two a day. For those nine weeks, we were both cared for and supported. We continued to celebrate our relationship and the love that we had while facing the ultimate loss. While it remains the hardest time of my life, I look back on that time with such fond memories. Yes, loss in lockdown has been at times hard, lonely and fearful. It has also been peaceful, hopeful and healing. I'm not quite sure yet what some parts of my life will look like as we begin to emerge and the world opens up again. No way to say goodbye. COVID arrived just as Mary declined. No visitors allowed, virus suspected. We waited for tests, days passed. We couldn't see her for three weeks. We only saw her on our screens. As we waited for results, we finally got to see her. I think she held on till we got there. We held her hand for as long as we could. Tried to comfort her, fearing the worst. In two days she passed, no way to say goodbye. No wake. No company, no proper funeral. No embrace, no touch, no kiss. No music played, no memories shared, no gathering. Back home by three, no way to say goodbye. Mary was passion and grace, advocate, agitator, teacher, artist, innovator, lover, wife, mother, carer, most of all, singer. We had 35 years together. Lots of highlights, lot of adventures, an incredible journey over too soon, never forgotten. No matter what, love is permanent and always was. Learning to talk, learning to listen, Acknowledge my emotions, heartache, loss, being alone. Miss her every day, no bitterness, keep on. It's what Mary would want. Reflection. Have we the right to be angry when you barely complained? Have we the right to scream in anguish when you hardly raised your voice? How hard was it for you to cope behind your bedroom door with a burden so heavy, a cross so crippling, as your life drained away? How scared were you? How silently terrified? And while we dreaded our door opening, in the middle of the night. We were there, ready to comfort you and share the pain. But the door never opened and now it never will. Have we the right to say, 
how cruel fate has been to us when it is you that has lost everything. Have we the right to say our lives were put on hold when at just 19 your life was taken away? With your hopes and dreams dashed, your plans destroyed as you face the inevitable, how it must have hurt when your schoolmate didn't recognise you. And still more when the mirror reflects back the image of a stranger, that cruel disease that took your life, slowly stole everything from you. Except for the love that we share, a love though often spoken too deep for words, are we entitled to think at least your suffering is over when it was your dying that brought relief? Is it okay for us to think we could take the cancer from you when you said yourself you wouldn't want that? And now every hour of every day we think of you. We struggle when the things in life you loved remind us of who you were. And what our lives are so sadly missing, you forever in our hearts. I was here. People lived and people died. People hurt and people cried. There was love and there was joy. In the end, there was just a void. I had a life. I had a place. I had a home. I died with grace. The light was there and now it's gone. I left my mark. I was here. One of us is missing. The loneliness is ridiculous because we are stuck in the house, no one going to school, work or college outside of our four walls. Never did we think that the day Sean died, that three weeks later it would be totally unavoidable to seek escapism and that it would be painstakingly clear that someone is missing. Yet there is very little that we can do together which works for everyone all of us appearing like we need to be away from each other. The very time we need each other the most in our lives is the very time we can't handle each other's presence. The unexpected death of a young person is shattering for the entire family. We as parents are in a whole new range of parenting within seconds of receiving the horrifying call. Your child is dead and your living children are now traumatised, bereaved children. What the hell is that about? None of it seems to happen in a way that reassures you that you will get through it in one piece. Not that this is possible. One of you is missing. The child is now missing from every day. How can we even begin to repair that? By living in hope of lighter days and admiring the strength of men and women who walk this path ahead of us. just before the dawn. This loss, it had no sound, like a fine strand of gold that once adorned your neck, falls light and gently, twinkling as it moves, moves away from its comfortable nook, your neck, your skin, your dreams within. This loss made no sound, no waves, no crash, just an absence of all that was. It embodied a place where love felt free. Lost. What does the year hold if we let our thoughts dwell? The impact of a tiny viral cell. Ripples are spreading, reaching far and wide. What have we lost while we were all inside? The feeling of taking a clean, deep breath. This levity that preceded facing death. The security to share a spoken word, poetry, lyrics, conversations unheard. The balance that equalises our burden, 
the fun and frivolity of meeting in person. The touch of a hand, a warm embrace, the light that spreads across a face. An open door, arms held wide, the listening ear in which you confide, the familiar faces from your bygone years, someone to wipe away your tears. The meeting of a clan to say farewell, the chance to gather and stories to tell, recognizing a loved one's legacy, celebrating their life with shared memory. The vibration of melodic tones, the urge to dance felt in your bones. The essence of our individuality cancelled out into neutrality. The sum of thoughts, actions, emotions, the peace that comes from gazing at the ocean. And as we dwell on what we lacked, we hold our hope we can transition back.